Welcome to the StrongTeams.com podcast, where we help leaders build strong teams. Teams built on empathy, understanding, and trust, where every team member feels valued and contributes at the highest level possible. Welcome to the StrongTeams.com podcast. My name is Steve Neesmith. And I'm Rodney Cox. And Rodney, our guest today on the podcast is John Gronsky. Major General John Gronsky, U.S. Army retired, is a proven combat leader and decorated Iraq War veteran. Over the last 40 years, he sharpened his skills in both the military and civilian sectors. Today, John is a CEO, an author, a speaker, a leadership trainer, and a consultant for Fortune 500 companies. He may be best known for his book, Iron Sharpened Leadership, Transforming Hard-Fought Lessons and Action, which we'll talk a little bit about today. John, thank you for joining us today on the StrongTeams.com podcast. Hey, Steve, it's my pleasure. And, and Rodney, uh, good to be with, with both you and Steve today. You know, John, I'd like to add my welcome and just thank you for your service and the sacrifice that you made and your family has made over the years for this great country. We are grateful for you and for that sacrifice. And as we get started today, you know, tell our listeners a little bit more about you, you your, your personal uh, background, uh, your educational background, your family, your hometown, just uh, help us understand who uh, John is. Yeah, well, thanks, Rodney. And I'm glad you mentioned the sacrifice that military families make as well, because uh, certainly the families probably make just as great a sacrifice as our, our military uh, personnel do. So thanks for mentioning that. Yeah, I come from uh, northeastern Pennsylvania. I was born in Muzik, Pennsylvania, a town of around 5,000 people in the Scranton Wilkes-Barre area. And uh you know, went to Riverside High School, University of Scranton, was in the ROTC at the University of Scranton, got my commission as a second lieutenant back in 1978. <laughs> and at that time, as a lieutenant, never dreamed that I would spend over 40 years in the Army, never dreamed that I would reach the rank of, of Major General. But uh, I just had a, a fantastic time uh, serving in the Army. Uh, the Army has done a lot more for me than I have ever done for, for it. Uh, had some great experiences. Had the honor of commanding a brigade of 5,000 soldiers and Marines in Ramadi, Iraq in 2005, 2005 and 2006. Uh, had the opportunity to command a 28th Infantry Division, which is a Pennsylvania Army National Guard division of 15,000 soldiers. And then spent the last three years of my career on active duty as one of the deputy commanding generals at U.S. Army Europe. So uh, had an opportunity to travel on business uh, to at least uh, 40 countries over there in Europe, uh, working with our allies and our partners, was in Ukraine numerous times. And uh, again, uh, just very blessed for the career I had. And my wife uh, and I, my wife's name is Berti. We've been married over 40 years. We have two children, two grandchildren. So again, uh, I, I just uh, thank God for the, the great fortune that I have had and my family have, have had over the last 40 some years. Mm, amen. Amen. Tell us a little bit about your career after your 40 years in the military. What have you been up to since you retired? Yeah. Well, you know, I retired in 2019, really not that long ago. And I uh, established a leadership consulting firm. The name of the, the company is Leader Grove. And uh, what I do is, was mentioned in the introduction. Uh, I do a lot of uh, keynote speaking, a lot of leadership training. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to say I do a lot of leadership training for law enforcement. Uh, I've done that all over the country. Uh, I've had an opportunity to uh, speak in Lithuania and Poland as well as numerous places all over the United States uh, since I retired in 2019. And I'll be in Florida in about two weeks uh, doing a, a few leadership presentations in Orlando. And uh, I, again, I just uh, am passionate about uh, leadership because, uh, you know, just a couple of weeks ago, I had someone at one of my presentations ask me, Hey, what is the best way for our country to overcome the challenges that, that we have? And, and my answer was leadership, leadership at the grassroots level. 
Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. leadership at the grassroots level is so important for our country. We can't expect our government to solve all the problems that we have. We've got to do it on our own. And we do that by being character based servant leaders. So that's that's what I'm all about. And that's what I'm passionate about. John, I know your signature book is titled Iron Sharpened Leadership. Can you summarize for our listeners a little bit about Iron Sharpened Leadership? What does it look like and, you know, kind of how you came up with the name? Yeah, you know, the title is based on Proverbs 27, 17, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Mm-hmm. And uh, that that uh, proverb, that Bible uh, verse means so much to me because uh, what it means to me is that we've got to surround ourselves with people who are stronger than us and more talented than we are and use those folks as coaches and mentors so we could become better quality people in, in the lives we lead. But at the same time, we've got to find people who perhaps are not as talented as we are, are not as strong as we are, and reach our hand down to those folks and help them along the way too. Uh, so it's really all about mentoring and coaching and finding the right people for us to uh, interact with uh, to help us just become better people in, in, in the world. John, I really can appreciate that that uh, last point you made about uh, about uh, leaders also kind of leaning down or, or 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 extending their hand down to folks that may not have the same background, uh, talents, and uh, experience than they do, and helping to build them up, kind of finding their strengths. That's what we're all about at Ministry Insights. So really appreciate that point. Uh, very impressed um, with. Uh, with that philosophy. You write and teach uh, that iron sharpened leadership involves a focus on character, competence, and resilience. Uh, can you unpack those those attributes for our listeners today? Sure. You know, when, when I talk about character, I'm talking about values. I'm talking about cultivating trust in an organization. I'm talking about caring for our followers. And when I talk about caring for followers, yeah, it's getting around and knowing what makes our followers tick, but it's also finding out what resources do they need so they could do their job more effectively? What obstacles might be in their way that they can't remove, but because of our position and our leadership role, we could remove those obstacles for them. So to me, that's one of the uh, the, the main things that that caring for our followers is all about, helping to do their, their job better. Uh, when I talk about uh, Competence, you know, I'm talking about leader competence, not technical or tactical competence of the job. Okay. So I'm talking about things like uh, being able to provide a vision or helping mm-hmm. people understand what the purpose of the organization is. I'm mm-hmm. talking about how to communicate better and how to have the courage to make decisions because, you know, as a leader, we are called upon to make those decisions. And We've got to have the courage to do so, even if we have imperfect information. And then when I talk about resilience, I'm talking about things like having positive energy, you know, to be able to motivate those around us and and being an optimist. And when I talk about leader optimism, uh, you know, what I'm talking about is believing that tomorrow is going to be better than today. And having a believable plan uh, that that your followers will will believe in, uh, so it's not just just some type of seeing through rose colored glasses, but it's actually having a plan to make tomorrow better than today. I'm also talking about fitness, you know. I, and of course, you know, to be resilient, you have to have you have to be physically fit, but you also have to be mentally fit, emotionally fit, and especially spiritually fit. Mm-hmm. And then the last thing I talk about when it comes to resilience is vulnerability. A leader has to allow themselves to be vulnerable. And they do that by moving out of their comfort zone and modeling what that looks like to their followers. By being vulnerable enough to ask followers their opinions. And then also being vulnerable enough to share stories with your followers about times that that you failed and how you were over... and sharing times that you failed and how you were able to overcome those failures. 
and sharing times that, you know, you, you swung at the ball and you missed it mm-hmm. and how you were able to overcome those things. So, you know, as I talk about character, competence and resilience, that's kind of how I unpack all of those things. Rodney, I don't know about you, but I could talk to John for the rest of the episode just about character, competence, and resilience. Um, that there's so much overlap there with uh, with things that we like to talk about. John, you definitely share the same leadership values as we do. We like to say that a, a strong team is a resilient team, and there's obviously a lot under you know that term resilience. But um, uh, just um, uh, could could talk the rest of the day just on on those three attributes. Uh, you talk about also the importance of leading with purpose uh, in your in your book. So many leaders get caught up, uh, especially in the ministry sector, on the task at hand and just frankly just getting stuff done. And uh, they start to fall into this trap of of leading is really just about getting a lot of things done efficiently. Um, and they just kind of lose sight of their purpose. Can you talk about why purpose is so important in leadership from your perspective? Yeah, you know, purpose is is really, uh, when, when you communicate purpose to your followers, you help them understand that they're working for something larger and bigger than just themselves. It gives them that drive they need. It helps them understand why they get out of bed in the morning, why they do what they do. Uh, and, you know, uh, the German philosopher Nietzsche had uh, a quote that, that I really love. And it's, it's something to the effect of, you know, the person who has a why could overcome almost any how. You know, and, and, you know, a lot of us struggle in our lives. And unless we really understand and come to grips with why are we here on earth? What is our purpose? Uh, it, it, it allows us to achieve so much more. And then lastly, I believe purpose is very similar to core values in that it provides us a direction, a direction in which to go. It kind of keeps us on the correct azimuth. So we behave and, and, and act in accordance with our values and what we believe our purpose is in life. So a lot to say about purpose as well. You know, purpose is very, very powerful, but people are kind of what drive everything. And so there's a quote that you say that it's people, not things, that nurture our soul. Could you speak to that a little bit and how you approach leadership in that phrase, that quote? Yeah, you know, I think that came really from my experience growing up as a young boy. One thing I didn't mention when I introduced myself and went over my background is that my my father uh, he only went to the seventh grade. You know, his, his parents came from Poland, so he was first generation American. And he, he had to leave school in the seventh grade because times were tough back then. And he had to go to work when he was 13 years old and then mm-hmm. served in World War II. And then after World War II, we opened up a, a business in northeastern Pennsylvania. And I grew up as one of seven children working in that family business. And I understood how important the employees were because they they interface with the customer every day. And then from my 40 years in the army, I also understood just how important that soldier is because that soldier is at the tip of the spear out there on, on the ground. And really, I believe it's the leader's role to create an environment where their followers could be the best that they could possibly be. So that's why I believe it's, it's, it's people, not things that nurture our soul. You know, I think, re, I think uh, relationships are really the currency of, of the current century that we're in. Relationships are, are so important, and it's by cultivating those relationships that we really become successful. And at the end of the day, what do we have left at the end of the day after we, we're done with our work and we're in retirement? We have our family and we have our, our close friends. And it's, it's really all about people when you get right down to it. So, John, relational capital, we think, is the highest capital that a leader can possess. It's like if you don't have relationship, as you've already stated, what do you have? And and we think relationship, right, our love for one another, our deep love for one another is what covers our mistakes. It's what covers our the multitude of sin that we 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 might uh, find ourselves in along the way as we do life together, as we journey together. And I think the importance of leaders seeing that relational capital and understanding that 
that the power of relationship is the glue to strong teams. You can't have empathy and understanding without strong relationships, and you definitely can't have trust without it. And and I don't think that you can have resilience without relationships. So speak to that just for a moment. Resilience, how do you build resilience in, in a team? Yeah, and, and again, you, you mentioned trust. And to me, trust is the lifeblood that runs through the veins of an organization. Mm. Without trust, uh, you can't move an organization forward. And I believe there's certain things you have to do as a leader to cultivate that trust. One of the things, I believe you have to trust others first. Because, mm-hmm. uh, and I like to ask people, you know, when I, when I am talking about trust, have you ever worked for a boss who didn't trust you? And a lot of people say, yeah, and, you know, throughout their lives, now and then they did work for a boss who didn't trust them. And I said, well, were you able to trust that boss? And, and everybody says, no, I wasn't able to trust that boss. So again, a leader has to take the risk to trust other people first. And then, you know, a leader has to display that integrity. And when I'm talking about integrity, I'm not only talking about telling the truth. I mean, that's obvious, mm-hmm. uh, but it's also being transparent and inform- keeping people informed. Uh, again, we talked about purpose, providing that purpose to others, providing that vision to others. And then it's it's really leading by example also helps cultivate that trust in an organization. And letting the people you lead know that any standard that you set for them to follow, you are also willing to follow. So it's things like that that cultivate that trust and create those relationships that are so important for an organization to move forward, to be profitable, to complete their mission, whatever that mission might be. John, I uh, follow you on social media and uh, you put out a quote recently that I just loved. It could be interpreted a lot of different ways. So that's why I'm going to ask you this question. So you can tell us how, uh, you know, how you interpret it. Um, You put out a quote that said, when in doubt, go on the offensive. And uh, I just absolutely love that. Uh, that stuck in the back of my brain and uh, was wondering if you could kind of unpack that for us and, and, and tell us what, what you mean when, when you say that. Yeah, you know, I remember reading something long ago. I don't even remember where I read it, uh, but it stuck with me. And it was uh, a phrase that said, leaders dispel uncertainty through action. And, nice. and, you know, we know in our in our lives, you know, the stock market doesn't like uncertainty. You know, most mm-hmm. people don't like uncertainty. And when there's uncertainty in an organization, people look toward that leader to take some type of action. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it doesn't it doesn't necessarily need to be a 100 percent the right thing to do, because a leader could start the organization moving in a certain direction, and then based on new information that comes in, they, they could pivot a little bit. But the organization mm-hmm. has to be moving in, in some direction. So that's why I say, you know, you know, when in doubt, go on the offensive, move in a direction. As you're moving in that direction, you're going to gain more information, and then you could pivot or adjust as you need to. But followers expect a leader to lead. And I like to say, you know, Steve, I I like to say leaders don't need to be great all the time, but they need to be great when it matters, which means when there's a crisis, when things aren't going exactly right, when, God forbid, there's an accident or or something that, 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 that goes wrong in an organization, the leaders need to be at that particular location and that point, uh, because again, in most organizations, they're steady state, things are moving along at a, at a normal pace. But when there's a crisis, that's when leaders need to be present. And that's when uh, leaders need to go on the offensive and take action. As Rodney has said in previous podcast episodes, uh, audience, uh, when you listen, when you're listening to this podcast right now, hit pause and hit rewind for the last 60 seconds and re-listen to everything John just said, because that's what I'm going to do. It was in some ways so simple, but so prolific. And I love that line. Leaders 
need to lead. <laughs> I mean, and I think that, uh, believe it or not, that is missed by some leaders that is there is times, first of all, it's all the time, but there are times when you need to step up and lead. And that is the fastest way out of the situation that you're in. And so I appreciate that answer. Yeah. So what advice would you give to ministry leaders who are listening to this broadcast today and they want to take the first step to develop their iron sharpened approach to leadership? Yeah, I would say the first thing is they have to be authentic. They have to be themselves. And, you know, I've got a, a lot of role models, you know, leadership role models in my life. And I try to take what I can from those examples. But at the end of the day, I have to be myself. I have to be authentic. The other thing I think is extremely important for ministry leaders and really any leader is you have to understand what your own personal core values are. And sure, we all have values, but you have to think long and hard about what are those three to five values that are really the, the core values in your own life? And, and what are you going to stand by in, in thick and thin? And I think if, and then the, the last thing we talked about already, but purpose, you have to understand what your purpose is in life. And, you know, I struggle a little bit with that when I retired from the military after 40 years, you know, because I understood what my purpose was in the military. And when I retired from the military, you know, I floundered for probably about the first six months or so thinking, you know, you know, what's my purpose now? And, and I decided that my purpose is to help leaders who want to improve become better leaders. That's my purpose. You know, I arrived at that. And now that I know what that purpose is and I understand what my core values are uh, and I try to be authentic and be myself, hey, I'm, I'm you know, ready to move forward with, with life and try to contribute as much good as I can. And I think that's what ministry leaders have to think about are those three things. As we draw this interview to a close, I always like to ask the, this final question. You know, what what is the question that I didn't ask you today that you really wished I would have asked? And how would you have responded to that question? How would you have answered it? Well, I will say this, Rodney. I think we had a good conversation. Uh, I think the questions that you and Steve asked were, were right on point. Um uh, I, I just wanted to have a conversation about leadership and I wanted to get my message out about what I believe are the elements of an iron sharpened leader. I think we touched on all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, I would just like to uh, reiterate how important I believe families are in our lives. You know, whether you're in, in uh, the military, in the ministry, no matter what, you know, industry or, or you know, what, what business you're in, line of work that you're in. Our families are so important. So we, we have to not only cultivate trust with our followers, with our employees, with our congregations, but also with our family, too. Um, you know, just just uh, something personal, you know, over the last several months, I kind of realized I wasn't treating my wife with the respect that she deserves. Mm. And, and I thought to myself, you know, I, I try to treat everybody else with dignity and respect, but sometimes I get a little bit short with her. Uh, maybe it's because we've been together for over 40 years. And so I've gone on a, my own personal journey to make sure that I show her the respect she deserves. So I guess the bottom line is we can't take our families for granted. And just as we try to be leaders to the people we lead in whatever organization we lead, we have to really take on that same role in our family. And, mm -hmm. and be leaders of our family and, and treat our family members with that same dignity and respect that they deserve. John, what a great way to end our time together with you modeling exactly what you've been telling our listeners. We see all this authenticity and what you just said about your wife and transparency and humility. And those are all uh, the character in which great leaders possess. And we're grateful for you. John, tell our listeners a little bit more about where they might find you. Yeah, uh, they can find me on my website. It's very simple, johngronsky.com. Uh, they could actually purchase signed copies of my book, Iron Sharpen Leadership, on my website. Or they could find my book, Iron Sharpen Leadership, on Amazon and other internet sites where books are sold. So uh, again, if 
people do um, have the opportunity to go on my website. I've got a great deal of free leadership development resources on that site. So I hope people will uh, visit my site and continue to learn, continue to grow. Yeah, and let us encourage you to do that. Once again, it's johngronsky.com. You can go out to johngronsky.com, find anything that you need. John, thank you for spending time with us here today. My pleasure. Until we meet again, God bless.